So today we're going to be talking about vertical springs. These are a huge step up from in difficulty from the horizontal springs that you did last year. You might have seen a picture of a vertical spring problem, but if you'll notice, I don't think you ever once had a homework or a test, or in particular a test question, where it was actually a vertical spring. And there's a reason for that. How many types of energy are involved in a horizontal spring? Two. Two. What are they? Spring and kinetic. That's it. In a horizontal spring. The problem with a vertical spring is you have an interaction between three different kinds of energy. So for example, when you pull the spring down at the all the way at the bottom point, how many types of energy are you dealing with? Springs. Spring potential and gravitational. gravitational potential. And oh, by the way, the gravitational potential is probably a negative number. Because it's a negative height, down oh. from the top, right? And then when the, an instant after you let the thing go, how many kinds of energy does it have? Three. Three. It's got spring potential, gravitational potential, which is negative, spring potential, which is positive, and then you have kinetic energy on the <coughs> way up. So they're much, much more difficult problems to think about and to worry about. Yeah? Is, like, at the middle point, like the equilibrium point? Is, mm -hmm. How many so kinds of energy do you have? Be two. You have three. In the middle point? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you have two kinds of energy. No. It, sorry. I take that back. You still have three kinds of energy because the spring is still stretched at the equilibrium point. And you have kinetic energy and you have negative gravitational potential energy. So, yeah, these problems are way more complicated. All right? So we're going to talk about how to approach them two different methods. We're going to talk about force methods, and we're going to talk about energy methods. In general, this is a continuing theme of this, this semester and this class as a whole. You can always solve a problem either with forces or with energy or with both. All right? Spring problems, you can solve with both. All right? Sometimes the force method is easier. Sometimes the energy method is easier. All right? And so we're going to talk about... We're going to do them both ways, and then we're going to talk about which method is easier in each case. All right, sound good? So, basic example. Let's say you have a vertical spring, and we want to fig figure out um, a mass on a vertical spring. You just you take this spring like this. Here's my spring. How far is this stretched right now? Zero. Zero. It's not. How come? Because there's, there's no weight on it. Let's assume that the spring itself is massless. Right? So if the spring itself is massless, it doesn't have very much mass, but we're going to pretend like the mass is zero. By the way, these problems become much harder if you suddenly add, say, the spring has a mass. No. Yeah. Um, so the spring is massless, so right now it's unstretched. I put a mass on, and then it goes like that, and it's going to achieve a new equilibrium position that is further down than the unstretched length. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. How can you figure out the stretch of that new equilibrium position? Ah, you do force balance, right? So if you used a free body diagram of this mass, how many forces are acting on it? Two. What are the forces on it? Gravity, Gravity pulls down and spring force or tension pulls up. And if this thing is not accelerating, what's true about the down and the up? They are balanced. Right? Okay. So therefore, what's the equation for gravity force? Mg. And what's the equation for spring force? Kx. So if mg equals kx, you could solve for x. Right? And then you would know, right? You would know how far it's stretched. All right, hold on. I need to get my screen back. Okay, so what we say is we have an 
a stretch, a length of the stretch, we're going to call that x. All right, does that make sense? All right, at equilibrium, there's two forces on this mass. There's an mg down, and there's a kx up. And if the thing isn't moving, that means the downs balance the ups, which means the mg's equals the kx, which means that we can solve for x at equilibrium, x eq, is going to be mg over k. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the most basic basic problem you can do in vertical springs. All right. So, um, now, uh, let's change the scenario a little bit. Uh, what would the amplitude of the oscillation be if the mass were attached to an unstretched spring and let go? So, here's the situation. You, here's an unstretched spring. I attach a mass to it and then let go. Watch what happens. What's the amplitude of that oscillation? From where you attached it to equilibrium. Did, did you, guys, you guys want to see that again? So an amplitude, remember, amplitude isn't from maximum value, maximum height to minimum height. What is amplitude? Max to the middle or from the min to the middle, right? That's the amplitude. So the answer to this question is really simple. Using forces, watch, boom. It's from max to the middle, which is halfway. Okay, so we want to figure out what the amplitude is. So here we go. There's two ways to solve for it. All right, what is amplitude if uh, mass is attached to an unstretched spring. So it's going to oscillate. And I want to know the amplitude of the oscillation. So three different pictures. Picture one is right when it's attached. Unstretched. Picture two is when it's at equilibrium, or halfway. And picture three, see if I can get this right, is, sorry, when it's at maximum stretch. Good? Oops, sorry, gotta put it on the screen. Okay, so three different pictures. Right, that's what the spring does. All right. So A would be the distance from here to here, and 2A would be the distance from here to here, right? Agree? So from 1 to 2 is A, and from 1 to 3 is 2A. Okay. There's two different ways to answer this, using forces or with energy. Which method's easier? Energy. Forces is. What's the answer? Forces. Yeah. A equals mg over k. Done. Because we did it in the previous problem. Right? Well, you could also get the same answer with energy. Here's how. When you do a problem with springs, the most important thing you have to know about this spring Listen. The most important thing you have to know about this spring is you always use unstretched length as your reference position. Not the equilibrium position. Wait, what did I just say? You always use unstretched yeah. unstretched length as your reference. So, is that the zero point? No. no. no why not? The spring is stretched right now because I have a mass hanging from it. Unstretched length, the zero position is up here, not right here. Got it? 
And this is the thing that people screw up and it causes them no end of pain. All right? You have to use the unstretched length if you didn't have a mass involved as the zero position. Because that is the only time when you have zero spring energy. Does that make sense? Okay. So here we go. Let's do this with an energy method. We set the starting position to be 1, and we say the total energy at 1 equals the total energy at, I don't know, 3? <coughs> or we could do 2. No, let's do 3, because 3 is easier. Total energy at 1 equals the total energy at 3, right? How much energy exists at 1? Oh, yeah, we need a zero height, right? What do we want to call the zero height? Okay, so height is equal to zero here. And what's x equal to here? How far is it stretched at one? Zero. zero. Okay, so how much total energy exists at one? Zero. zero. Because there's no stretch and there's no height. Ah, so what's the height at 3? 2A. MGH at 3. And what other kind of energy exists at 3? Spring threat. Spring threat. 1 half KX squared at point 3. Okay, so what's MGH at 3 is negative 2A. Do you see why? Because you're now below where you started. One half k. The problem is you have to define your zero spring stretch length as when the spring is unstretched. So it has to be point one has to be your x equals zero spot. And then if you want to define the height equals zero spot to be the bottom then you'd have to come up with a relationship between h and x. In other words, h would be negative x minus 2a. And that makes it really confusing. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Uh, x3, what's the position at 3? x3 is 2a, right? No. It's positive 2A. Stretch in the positive direction. H is equal to the negative X. Yes. Yes, the notes are different. I'm doing them differently. I'm doing them a simpler way. All right. Everybody got that? All right. So we need to come up with, somehow we need to end up with this. Let's see if, we're, if that's going to happen. 0 equals m, 0 equals, let's see, let's do negative 2mga equals 1 half k times 4a squared. Sound good? Positive, right. Positive 2mga equals 1 half k times 4a squared. One of the a's cancels. 2, the 2's cancel. And I'm left with mg equals ka or a equals mg over k. That clearly is a way more difficult way to arrive at the same answer. Energy is harder in this case. Now I told you a general rule that energy, is, energy methods tend to be easier, but this is an exception to that rule. All right? <coughs> So here's what I recommend. If you're ever asked to find an equilibrium position, use forces, not energy. You can still get the same answer, but forces is quicker. All right, let's do a different one. Um, oh, here's one. Vertical, sorry, series versus parallel springs. We actually kind of did this already. There's two springs in series. 
and two springs in parallel. K and K, K and K. Are they the same situation physically? Yes or no? What do you think? No. Which is stiffer? The one on the right, the parallel. Parallel. So parallel is stiffer. Okay. So I have two equivalent springs and you want to pull them back one meter. Right? So how many springs do you have to pull back? So you've got two tensions to deal with for that meter, right? So it's double the force per meter. So that means the K equivalent would be K plus K, which would be 2K for parallel, right? What about this one? Yeah, it's a lot like electricity. What's the answer? It's just like resistors, actually. Think about it this way. You've got a spring and then another <coughs> spring in series. How, far, how hard is it to pull it back one meter? It's a lot easier. How come? It's little bits of easy pull. Yeah, each spring is only pulled back half as far, right? So if each spring is only pulled back half as far, that means it's half as much force to pull it back that far. So the equivalent is actually 1 over, right? K over K plus K times K or 1 half K. All right? And that's it.